بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبع هداه أما بعد وهذا هو الدرس السادس والعلون ونحن في الجزء الثاني أو في الحصة الثانية من هذا الدرس وقد ما إلى قول المدرس إلى قول المدرس أفيها نقود كثيرة فقال أحمد نعم فيها ثلاثمائة ريال فيها ثلاثمائة ريال هذا الضمير ها يعود إلى أي شيء إلى محفظة أحسنت إلى المحفظة إلى محفظة أحمد ثم نحتاج اليوم إلى من يقرأ للمدرس يحيى وعمر وخالد فنمير هل ستقرأ المدرس جيد Can you repeat the sentence, please? Can you repeat, please? Al-Mudarris, read Al-Mudarris. Okay. And Ilyas, you can read Khalid. And we will have Abu Hassan reading Umar, Zaid reading Yahya. Let's see how it goes. أين ذهبت؟ أيوة إلى هنا. إذا تفضل يا نمير. من أين أبدو؟ أب أب from where should I start؟ صحيح صحيح you said it correctly. من أين أبدو؟ صحيح ابدأ من هنا. Okay. أين وضعتها؟ هذا الفعل وضعتها فعل ماضي من وضع يضع ما هو الأمر ما هو الفعل الأمر من وضع يضع السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ضع فعل الأمر ضع ضع أحسن يحد تحذف حرف المضارعة ثم تجزم أو تجزم الفعل السكون فتصبح ويصبح الفعل ضع وهذا هو الفعل الأمر لماذا؟ لأن هذا الفعل من المثال وهو الحرف الأول حرف علة حرف الأول حرف علة وهو الواو أين وضعتها هذا الضمير ها ما إعرابه ما إعرابه We have some background sound coming from your your end. No, I'm fine. Okay, I'm here. How's that going to be for this? Were you cooking fish and chips or what? Cooking. Have a memo and like that. I like that. You always make it interesting. Yeah, because yeah. You guys got trouble to get vision in the states. Yeah, it's difficult. Now for the answer, ما هو إعراب الضمير ها؟ إلياس ساعدنا أن أن كذنا سيفس. نعم. ضمير متصل. صحيح. ضمير متصل. 
مرفوع أو في محل رفع أو في محل جر أو في محل نصب ولماذا؟ آه. نصب آه. لأن مبني في محل نصب على السكون ولكن في محل نصب كما قال إلياس لماذا هذا الضمير في محل نصب؟ لماذا لأن... مكتوب؟ ل... لأنه في محل مفعول به نعم نعم لأنه مفعول به مثل ما قال أبو الحسن هو مفعول به وذا نعم. أين وضع أحمد المحفظة؟ هذا هو معنى السؤال أين وضع أحمد المحفظة؟ طيب قال أحمد تفضل يا زيد لا ليس بزيد إنما زيد يقرأ يحيى ولم نختر من سيقرأ أحمد إذا بلال نعم وضعتها على المكتب هنا وخرجت لأشرب الماء بارك الله فيك ولماذا وجدنا فتحة على الفعل أشرب وهو فعل مضاري أشرب لام التعليل بارك الله فيك لام التعليل والأصل لأن لأن أشرب وهو منصوب بأن المضمرة منصوب بأن المضمرة المضمرة عفوا brothers عفوا ميمون and Bilal I'm going to put your, both of your mics on mute temporarily if you don't mind because there's some feedback coming through and when you need your mic you can switch it on and then give your input inshallah apologies for that أن المضمرة like saying uh, hidden مستطر so لأشرب means لأن أشرب الماء طيب تفضل النمير لما وضعتها على المكتب هذا خ... هذا خطأ كبير يجب أن تضعت تضعها في جيبك أوجد أحد محفظته يا إخوان يا إخواني بارك الله فيك فهذه الجملة جميلة جدا لما لما بمعنى لماذا وضعتها وضع من الفعل المثال والحرف الأول فاء الفعلي you remember guys we said that the, the, the Arabic pattern the Arabic pattern uh, of, of verbs we say that the first letter, uh, the first uh, root letter is called the fa of the kalima. And the second letter or the middle one is called the ain of the kalima. And the last, the main last root letter is called the lam of the kalima. This if you want to point it out, rather than saying, look at the wa or the dad or the ain in wada, we say fa ul kalima, the fa of the kalima, the letter was in, which is in the position of the fa is a harf illa when it comes to the mithal wada'a. There he is. And then he said, Yajibu an tada'aha. Tada'a fi'il mudari'. Tada'u. Then he said, an tada'a. An tada'aha. There he is. منصوب بأن الناصبة منصوب بأن الناصبة في جيبك ما معنى الجيب ما هو الجيب فاكت فاكت صحيح هذا هو الجيب And this is the current day. 
the current day meaning of al jayb but in the quran the word jayb occurs doesn't mean this in the quran doesn't mean jib it doesn't mean uh, uh, pocket in this in the in the way that we know it musa alayhi salam and the to put his hand in his jayb that means through the uh, through the, the 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 gap, the hole in the garment, which was here. So this portion of the garment, there's an opening, and but there's a there's an opening here. This is known as the jape, or maybe not this up there, not on the neck, but rather here towards the chest. Okay. And Musa alayhi salam Allah told him to put his hand in his jabe and take it out and it will come out as a, a come out white as a sign and also Allah commanded the believing women to cast down their veils over their juyub juyub plural of jabe doesn't mean over their pockets it means over their chests cast down meaning starting from above and this is the proof that the face should be covered and the, and the hijab starts from the head, it goes down and it covers the chest. And uh, the, um, um, the upper portion of the body. So that is al jayb. But nowadays, when we refer to jayb in common day language, it refers, as you said, to the pockets. Jayb, pocket, so jayb, the jayb. What does the teacher mean when he says Yajibu an tadaaha fi jaybika? Like you should have put it in your pocket. Like, yeah, you have to put it in your pocket. You should have put it in your pocket. That's right. You need to put it in your pocket. Yajibu means Yajibu. This is another example of a fi'lul mithal. It is Wajaba. Yajibu Wajaba Yajibu okay. And now you can see that some verbs are Wada'a Yada'u with a fatha on the Ainul Kalima and some of them have a Kasra on the Ainul Kalima Wajaba Yajibu Fadrakinu Mayb does the word yajib has some connection with jawab or the word jawab answers? Um, it doesn't. I don't, as far as I know, it doesn't because this word wajaba it comes is related to the word wajib and wujub. Something is an obligation or a must. As for the one you're talking about, then the harf al illa is in the is the ainul kalima is in the middle, and this is not al mithal. This is we'll study another lesson inshallah. This is called al ajwa, when the harf al illa is in the middle, like qala, yeah, and yeah. Let's think of one right now, qala. So the middle letter is the one which is the harf al-illah. That is called ajwaf, and, and, and it has its own rulings as well. Fadr al we're going to have kana. some examples. And kana, kana, okay. yeah, kana, even though kana is fi'l nakis, but yeah, that's the idea. And oh. um, so Ibn Maimun asked, tada'aha uh, is wada'tuha, the word is tada'aha, na'am. Wada'tuha is fi'l madi. Tada'aha is fi'l mudari. Wada'a yada'u an tada'a anta. So this is fi'al madi and fi'al mudari. Then he said, then the teacher asks, A wajada ahadun mahfadatahu, ya ikhwanu, ya ikhwanu, 
So he said, Wajada. So now you have another example. So you can see that this lesson is full of examples of Al Mithal. Yeah, loads of lots of mithal for mithal. That's what Imran was asking the other day. Is it the same word as example? It is. Loads of amtila for al mithal. Lots of examples for the verb, which is mithal. So far, you have wada'a, yada'u. Oops. See if I can fix that. Not perfect, but hopefully you're with me. Yada'u. Wada'u yada'u. Also, wajaba yajibu. What's the other example? Wajada yajidu. Ahsan. Wajada yajidu. Which means to find. Did anyone find it? Did anyone find his wallet? Ya Ikhwan? And then Khalid responds by saying, which is, I think, Ilyas. La. Lam najidha ya shaykhu. Ahsan to Lam najidha. Limada raina sukunan ala najid. Why is it not najid or al mudari? Because of lam. Lam lam tajzimu. Lam Lam tajzimu al fi'l mudari. Lam. That's the reason. La lam najid ha ya shaykhu. And they say shaykh out of respect over here. For anyone who is a teacher or teaching deen, he is a shaykh. Tayyib, not, not necessarily a scholar, but it's respect. Tafaddal. Ha hiya the ya uthadu inna ha taht. Tahta Kurstah in Naha Tahta Kursi 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 So this is nice. This is something new. If it does a sad this one, Ashron Ha Hia V. And this is a way of drawing attention to something. And if, because this is mahfada is mu'annad, he said here. And he said the. If it was mudakkar, he would say ha huwa da. Ha huwa da. And this is interesting because this reveals for the first time, this is revealing to us something that we learn in Al Darsul Awal in Al Kitab Al Awal. Al Darsul Awal, Al Kitab Al Awal, the first thing you learned was Hada, for example, Hada Baitun, Hada Miftahun. And then uh, two lessons later, approximately, or three lessons later, you learned Hadihi. Sayyaratun. Tayyip. So now, this lesson, Asadisul Ishroon, is revealing to us that this ha, in actual fact, is written like this with an alif when it's written alone. And this is called ha utanbi. Ha atanbi, which is ha to draw attention. This is the ha of drawing attention. Jayid? But when you join it to da and the, then the alif disappears when you're in writing, but it's there in pronunciation. That's why you don't say, when you see this word, you don't say 
Hada, Hada. He doesn't say Hada. What do you say? You say Hada. Alif. Though you can't see the Alif. And so when you separate the Ha and the actual Ism Ishara, this is when the masculine shows as the and the feminine shows as the. The masculine shows as the, the mudakkar is the, and the mu'annath is the. So the pronunciation, ha, the. And this one, ha, the. And then the ha is added at the end. But I can't tell you right now why it's pronounced, why there, why there is a, a ha at the end. Maybe somebody here can tell me. But the point here is that da is for mudakkar, the is for mu'annaf. And both of them have, have ha at the beginning. This is harf at tanbih. This is to draw attention. Like saying, like saying here, it is uh, actually, that's the same as even if you say the. In any case, it's to draw attention. Like over here. Here it is over here. Here it is over here like that. So ha hi ya di is and what has happened over here? Look what the what Omar said. Ha hi ya di. What's happened? They separated between harput tanbi and the ism ishara. Ha hi. Okay. They separated it with. The Damir of Hiya. And then the Alif appeared. And it became Ha Hiya Di. Tayyip, and referring to the Mahfada, and that is Mu'annaf. Tahta Kursi. And the word Kursi, as you know from Dars al Awwal, Hada Kursiyun. Kursiyun is a shutdown on the Ya. So when you, when you, when this becomes Mudaf, Kursi yuhu, kur, tahta kursi yihi. Right. Uh, so they found the wallet, alhamdulillah, with hopefully he had all the money inside it under, under his own chair. So he wasn't looking very hard. And then Zaid says, uh, is it maybe to show male and female? It is to show male and female. But Hada and Hadi, already we have the female and the male with that and the. But my question was Ha the he. Where's this extra ha sound coming from? Maybe it's for pronunciation. Allah. The Alif to show male, the ha to show female. Allah. Uh, I'm not sure you got to explain it, but with your mic. And because I'm not exactly sure the point that you're trying to make. Until you do that, we continue with the reading. Is that a new move? Tafadbar. Khudha wada'ha fi jaybika. Here you are. Barakallahu feek. So here we have two examples of fi'l amr next to each other. We have something that we've already studied before, which is and this shows that you don't always need an alif at the beginning of fi'l uh, amr if the, the first letter of the fi'l already has um, a mutaharrik. It is already mutaharrik. If it doesn't have a sukun. So no need to add an alif at the beginning. So khud, because this is from Akhada Yahudu. Let's write it over here. Akhada Yahudu. Walaikum salam, Zaid. Nam. Oh, you didn't notice. 
تفضل ليجا مايك أخذ يأخذ and then when you want to make it into يأخذ uh, and when you want to make it فعل أمر and the rule is to remove the حرف المضارع so you take the يأ away and then you've got this ألف at the beginning so there's a kun on it with this hamza I mean so then do you say أخذ which is difficult, it's awkward to say that. So what they did was they even, they removed this alif altogether and they said, yalla, they just say it like this. Khud, two letters. And this is the example of a, of a fi'il that starts with a hamza at the beginning. And this is called al fi'il al mahmuz, which we'll take these details later, inshallah. Al mahmuz, meaning hamza. And where is the Hamza? Sometimes it can be in the at the beginning, like Akhada. And sometimes it can be in the middle, like Sa'ala. And sometimes it can be at the end, like Kara'a. Hamza is moving, sometimes beginning, sometimes middle, sometimes end. All of these verbs, they're all called Al-Mahmuz, meaning it has a Hamza in, in it. But then you just have to specify is it Mahmuz al fa Mahmuz al ain or Mahmuz al lam Which part of the fi'l has the Hamza? And every um, uh, case has its own peculiarities or specific rules. Jayid? So that's one fi'l amr, which is khud. And the second one is where? Where is the second fi'l amr in that sentence? Da'a. <laughs> da'a. But how about this wa'a? Is it not? Is it not wada? Wada? Huh? Wada? Is this not no. part of the verb? Yeah. Yeah. Wa'a. Barakallahu feek. This wa'a is not the wa'a which is fa'ul kalima. This is not fa'ul fi'l. This is not the beginning of the verb. This is wa'a al-at. Khudha. Take it. And wow, al at and ba'ha, put it. So the verb is actually starting from here. And that is the verb there. Ba, ba. Fail amr. And then he said ha, meaning the mahvada, mafulun bi, bi mahali nasb. Ba'ha, bi jay bika. Exactly. Don't leave it on your desk again, Ahmed. Put it in your pocket. Then what happens? Yeah, um, Elias, you can read this because you only read one small line. What happens in the story next, Elias? So Yahya stands up. Yasir. Similar to the word Sayyara, which means moving towards. So Yahya stands up and starts heading towards the teacher. Nahwa al-mudarrisi. Nahwa, we said previously, it means in the direction of, as well as other, other things. So Yahya is going towards the teacher. Teacher gets worried. Why is this guy coming, to, coming towards me? And he says, Numair? Qif ya ulaydun. <laughs> Stop right there. Obviously, as a teacher, you know, some of us are teachers, you know that when the student's coming towards you without permission, anything might happen next. You want to stop the guy in his tracks. And I, hey, you I, want so he says, Kif. So, what's this? Kif? This is Fi'al Amr. Where's it coming from? Kif. Kaf. Wakafa. 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 We can see all this uh, stop sign in uh, Gulf countries, right? And that's what we said on the first lesson when we were introducing lesson 27. 
we said, you find in the Gulf countries um, that the stop sign, the red stop sign for cars, it says if, but it doesn't show you the Fatabama You have to know what it what it means. Gift. Stop. Gift can have two meanings. Wakafa can have two meanings. Stand. It means to stand. Afwan Elias, go ahead. I was going to say stand and stop. And stop. You're right. It has two meanings. One is standing, to stand. The other one is to stop. Both of them are valid. Okay. And this is a really interesting point because my brothers, sisters as well, this is a really interesting point and it has implications in the Sharia. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Wakaftuha Huna Wa Kulluha Mawkifun. He said, I did wak I did wakafa. Some might say stand, others might say stop. I, I stood here or I stayed here. I entered Arafa and spent time here. And Arafa, all of Arafa is a place of the translation here becomes complicated. Do you because commonly you find that hadith translated as I stood here and Arafa is a all of Arafa is a place of standing. What happens today when you go for Hajj? And these you go for Hajj just before Maghrib is the last time, the best time to make dua or the last opportunity people have to make dua. Everyone stands. They're standing and making dua. Almost like they think that Prophet وسلم, was standing in Arafah because he said, Waqaftu. It doesn't mean that he was standing on his two feet, but that he was on his camel. He was sitting. But he was remaining his physical presence. His presence was in Arafah. So when he says Wakaftuha Huna wa Arafa Kullaha Mawkir, he means I I I entered Arafah, I stayed in Arafah, or I would I was in Arafah, and Arafah, all of all of Arafah is a place of uh, being in. You don't have to be specifically in the same place that the Prophet Muhammad was, uh, as some people say that it was in Mount. Arafah, or that, what, what they call nowadays Jabal, Jabal Rahman. Okay? So you don't have to be on that mountain, you know that you have to be standing. And I found people of, people of knowledge, in actual fact, making dua and doing dhikr while they were lying down in Arafah, showing almost an example to the others that you're not supposed to be necessarily standing up specifically. There's no special virtue for standing on your two legs in Arafah. You just have to be, you have to be there, whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, whether you're whether you're laying down, lying down. So he says to him, "Kif." Does he mean stand? He's already coming, walking towards him. So is he coming towards him on a wheelchair? And he says to him, "Stand." Stop. Stop. He probably he's, he's probably coming towards him on his feet. He's walking towards him, and the teacher says, "Kif." Stop. And then he says. Ya Wuleidu. Ya Wuleidu. Well, his name is not Wuleid, his name is Yahya. Because the, the story says Yakumu Yahya. Yahya stands and heads towards the teacher. And over here, the rest of the conversation is between the teacher and Yahya. So, what's Wuleid? This word, we will discuss it inshallah next lesson. The Adan is going here in Jeddah. And it takes some explanation to explain that word and the words which are like it. Um, yeah, I think that, that's, that's what it is. But, so we'll stop there. In the name of Allah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just as wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mention of our Wednesday's class, inshallah, Wednesday's class will have to end much earlier than today's class.
since I have another engagement to be somewhere at Isha, uh, about 20 or 25 minutes away from my house. So therefore, we're starting at 7.15 since Maghrib is getting later. Um, but we'll try to start, let's say, five minutes early, so 7.10, something like that. And then we'll be able to finish at 7.35 and get a 20, 25 minute class in, which will be sufficient, inshallah, to cover this material that we have left, uh, the, the last few lines. And, um, and maybe we'll defer the exercises to the following uh, week. So do, even though the lesson will be advertised at 7.15, do try to attend earlier, a few minutes earlier. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to start the class around about 7.10, inshallah. And, um, and therefore, finish a bit earlier than the usual time of 7.35. I'm talking about in uh, Makkah standard time, if that's what they call it. Makkah time. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. the kids are having fun with opening the mics and switching the mics off and saying <laughs> like, a, like a classroom, classroom environment. <laughs> Just about to say, it almost reminded me of the, you know, the classroom when we were young. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But children, who are, who's here amongst us from the children, you have to be mindful of these types of classes that you are surrounded by adults. So the, 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 the let's say, the, um, the behavior that you might display amongst your own age group would be different than that displayed among those who are older than you. So you have to bear that in mind and try to um, take that on board as well, inshallah. Right. Okay. I'm scared to say salam for the third time now, so waiting for the reaction we might get from the kids. Allah, I've said it enough. Jazakallah khair. Ila al-liqa. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair.